Hey, I'm Bruce Naylor, and I am the Boomer Consumer. And in this video, we're going to answer the question, are these Klipsch RP600 amp bookshelf speakers some of the most overhyped speakers on the market? And are they truly, truly as good as all the reviewers say they are? Well, let's talk about in this video. Now, as a disclaimer, I paid for these with my own funds. No one's reviewed this video prior to posting, and all opinions are my own. For further information, I do have my Amazon affiliate link down below if you'd like to learn more about these speakers. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to refer to these as the RP600s. Now, I have tested with both my Pioneer SX3700 vintage receiver as well as my NAD, uh, let's see, it's the 316BV2 uh, integrated amplifier. So I've used a couple different sources with these. For analog listening, I use my Pioneer CTF900 cassette as well as the AM or the FM stereo on my receiver. I don't have a turntable, folks. Well, I'm actually going to make a video about that in the near future. As far as digital, I'm a subscriber to Amazon um, HD Music, their unlimited plan. So I'm subscribed to that, and that comes through the Echo Link to the Shit Modi 3 DAC. And that's how I listen to my streaming music. So I've listened to a lot of different kinds of music on this, everything from Aretha Franklin to John Coltrane to the Beatles, uh, just a number of different sources. I've been listening to these for a month uh, it's before I made this video. These are Klipsch's top-of-the-line stand mount speakers, okay? This is it. This is the pinnacle right here. Now, they sell anywhere between... I've seen them as low as $377 on sale just here recently to over $600 when they're not on sale. The prices for these can be all over the map. Now, these are available in the ebony and walnut finish, and for $100 more, you can get the ebony black, which are beautiful, but I just couldn't see that being worth the extra 100 bucks. So how did I come across buying these? Well, like a lot of other people, I was doing research. I have a fairly small office. Typically, you want a smaller speaker for a small room, bigger room, bigger speaker. And I kept coming up across the RP600s over and over again. Fortunately for me, I have a local uh, hi-fi shop here in Decatur. They happen to have a set on display. And so I just made a beeline right to their shop, went in and I additioned these as well as several other different pairs of speakers. And I have to tell you that I was impressed. Now, I own the Klipsch R41Ms, which are a very bright, small bookshelf speaker, and I was expecting these to sound as bright or even brighter than those. I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't as bright as the 41Ms. That kind of surprised me, actually. Don't get me wrong. They are a still a bright speaker, but I was very pleased about the bass and the mid-range on these as compared to the 41Ms. So they're, they're not quite as lively sounding, but they're still plenty lively. Okay, so this is a bass reflex speaker. So you've got a six and a half inch ceramic copper spun woofer. And then here you have a one inch titanium tweeter and what they call the Tractrix horn. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. It is made out of MDF materials, very solid. They did a very nice, these are vinyl wrap, by the way. These manufacturers getting so doggone good at really fooling you to think this is an actual veneer, but no, it is a vinyl wrap. Let's go ahead and turn it around. By the way, these are a big bookshelf speaker, 16 pounds. And as uh, I believe I've got the measurements here, 15.7 inches tall. You've got 11.9 inches deep and they are eight inches wide. So this is a big bookshelf speaker. Now let me turn this around because it is heavy. So you can see the rear. So on the back we have the Tractrix uh, port on the back and then you have a set of uh, binding posts on here. So you could buy amp this if you want to. I'm not really into buy amp. I've never buy amp this speaker before but 
it is there if you want to do that. Something else is interesting surrounding the tweeter. Let's see if we can get a little bit better shot on that. It's kind of a rubbery material on here, and the front is a different kind of material as well. So I think it's designed to really stop resonance. Very, very important to any kind of a speaker. With that Tractrix port on the back, well, you can actually set it a little bit closer to your front wall. I found it works best for me about 24 inches or so from the front wall. One really great thing about these is these are a very sensitive speaker. They're rated at 96 dB, so at one watt at one meter puts out 96 decibels. So you don't have to have a very powerful amplifier to drive this. I think a tube amplifier would match very nicely. One of those Rye Song 5 watts would be plenty to get this good and loud. Probably sound super, super sweet. So the star of the show on this is the Tractrix horn. And it's a one inch titanium tweeter. You have this, whether you want to call it a horn, whether you want to call it a waveguide, don't, I don't really care. The idea is to disperse that and give you really nice, beautiful highs a sense of presence. I listen to a lot of jazz music. I listen to New Age. I listen to classic rock. I have very eclectic taste in music. But man, on jazz, these things are just amazing. The, the sound, the, 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 whether it's a, a saxophone or uh, just any of the instruments, the, the, the piano, it really comes across quite beautifully. This does an excellent job. Is it a horn or is it a waveguide? You know, kind of the idea of a horn is to make things louder. But this isn't shouty, this isn't chesty at all. It's got a very good presentation and that's important. Okay, let's talk about soundstage and imaging. First, I found that the soundstage for me was the best at around two feet pulled away from the front wall. Um, the, the music began to fade into behind the speaker. The stage was taller than the speakers. It was really a very good sound stage. But when it came to the imaging, that's where things got a little dicey. And what I found, if I towed them in 20, 25 degrees, then the imaging really, really improved. Suddenly I could locate on, in the music you know, where somebody was playing a clarinet or where that violinist was, where that singer was. The imaging really got better. So I think you'll find it, it might be necessary to tow these in just a little bit to get that imaging, you know, spot on. Okay, as far as the bass goes, you have a six and a half inch woofer. That should tell you right now, this is not going to shake the room and give you that bass you're going to feel. I think a perfect match would be to add a powered subwoofer uh, with these, especially if you're, I call you a bass head, but if you're really into that deep, deep uh, bass, you're probably going to need a powered sub. For me, in my room and in my environment, um, these do the job, especially to the type of mu uh, for the type of music that I listen to, which again is more jazz, R&B, some new age stuff some classic rock, but a lot of vocal stuff is what I listen to. Right now I'm listening to the best of Aretha Franklin. And wow, does that sound fantastic on here. But if you want that deep bass, you're probably going to need to get a powered subwoofer. And that'll make these probably absolutely perfect for most applications. All right, let's talk about the mid-range. I'm going to refer to something that, um, and I don't think I coined this term, but the clips dip. But the way the crossover works, you know, if you're looking at frequency response, you want it to be kind of a flat line all the way across the frequencies. And there's a significant dip right where the crossover takes over around that uh, 2 kilohertz, 1.8 kilohertz range. However, that should not be a concern. Vocals are fantastic on these. Maybe they compensate a little bit through the Tractix horn, but... If vocals are fantastic. This is one of the things this thing excels at. So if you come across, hey, there's a dip in the, or the crossover, my advice is take that with a grain of salt. Let your ears, trust your ears. Remember, if it sounds good to you, isn't that good enough? Getting to the highs, of course, that's kind of the star of this show. These are a brighter speaker. They're north of neutral, but they're not 
overly bright. A lot of people don't want overly bright. Some people want neutral. Like I said, they're a little bit north of neutral. But the highs are so wonderful on these. I, I, can't, I can't tell you enough about how much that I enjoy, especially the string instruments. Uh, fantastic. Violins. I love listening to violins. And it's just an incredible experience with these bookshelf speakers. So whether you're listening to strings, piano, maybe listening to some classical, some jazz, they're going to be a lively, smooth-sounding speaker with great vocals. Okay bass, add a powered subwoofer if you must, if that's what you're going for. But these are an excellent all-arounder with a lively presence, and, and I think that's what makes these so popular. I remember bookshelf speakers weren't a good option a long time ago. What was available just whew, stunk. They've come so far with these things. It's amazing that you can get the sound quality of a bookshelf that you could only get out of a floor stander just not that long ago. So to answer the question, are these overhyped? I believe for the most part, they're worth the praise that they get. Are there better sounding bookshelf speakers out there? I'm sure there are, but I haven't run across them yet, but maybe I will. And I'll let you know if I do. They're an excellent looking speaker. They're a little large, a little on the heavy side. So you want to make sure you put these on a nice solid stand or I don't know if I'd really put them on a bookshelf, to be honest with you. Put them on something good and sturdy. They look great. They sound fantastic. So are they worth it? Yeah, my only gripe really is the pricing scheme. What are you willing to pay for them? Do you wait on their sale? Or is the, the pricing's all over the map on these things? So if you're interested in the pair, keep your eyes open. Check for specials and deals on these. But I have, you know, it, at you know, 500 bucks, they're definitely worth it. I don't know what the full list price is, like 679, 659. No, I, I, I think you should wait till you get these on sale. But they go on sale all the time. You won't regret these, I, I think. They come in walnut again, piano black. I have the ebony. Are they overhyped? No, I, th I think they really do deserve a lot of the praise that they get. I think Klipsch did a remarkable job with these. And that's it. Bruce Naylor, your boomer consumer. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.